First of all, I was going to ask you, um, in your time as the CEO of Novo Nordisk, um, how did you view this shareholder v stakeholder debate? I was, I was involved in how to articulate the role of the enterprise even before I became CEO. Uh, my predecessor of the group uh, was very adamant about uh, the fact that we as a company should be seen as a, a decent and, and responsible enterprise. And that in our behaviors, we should act in a way as if we were just acting as good citizens. So the, the, the debate that was going on outside, did you actually ever have to get involved in a debate shareholder v stakeholder kind of com conversation or was that kind of irrelevant were you just focusing on what you as a business needed to do well our orientation was if you compare at the time to the general business philosophies somewhat of an outlier we were we were the first company to talk about corporate social responsibility we were the first company to integrate our annual reports to having both financial reporting and environmental and social reporting. We were one of the first companies to amend the articles of association to reflect that our company was managed according to what we call the triple bottom line, meaning that we should seek to be long-term financially viable, but we should do it in a way which is socially and environmentally sustainable. And so this was outliers. So in the beginning, there was not, not really any, 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 anything for me to do. Later on, interestingly, the, the challenge became another one. And that was to ensure that whatever we did was equitable. And, and, and we, we attracted a lot of people to the company uh, that, that adopted our corporate social responsibility agenda. But, uh, but I had to make sure that that was balanced up against the needs of the main stakeholders, which are the patients we serve and the employees and the shareholders. And this was interesting. So that was internally driven by the values of the organization rather than from external pressure. Yes, completely. Uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, so, do you think I, I understand the the nature of the ownership of uh, the company probably facilitated that um, because of the you know the the ownership model? Is that correct? That is, our ownership model is is a foundation ownership, but a foundation with corporate interests. So the reason for the foundation to exist is to remain forever a stable foundation for the operating of the companies and with the proceeds to benefit society and people at large. Specifically Denmark could be, could be larger given, given the size that we have become. So uh, this, is a, this is a very common uh, Legal structure uh, we have in Denmark, most of the, uh, the large corporations are incorporated this way. But that doesn't mean that you're not operating commercially. That, that it's, you're, you would consider yourself as commercial as other organizations, yeah? Absolutely, because 75% of the equity in the company is held by shareholders outside the foundation. And so for us, we need to compete on the same level as normal uh, corporation because otherwise we could not attract the best talent. And so we wanted to win based on the same metrics uh, as, as the other companies. So based on, on, on that, those statements so far, um, how much competitive advantage do you think that, that ownership model actually is uh, and why? It has, it has, had tremendous uh, competitive advantage in that it allowed us to think long-term. 
When we were a smaller company, it was also in some ways an impediment for making larger and structural deals. For instance, it was difficult uh, to make transnational mergers uh, that might have accelerated our globalization as a company. So we had to largely grow by organic growth. But as we became a global entity, it's, an enorm it's been an enormous advantage that it allows us to think long-term and it obliges us to think long-term. And we tell all the other shareholders, the normal shareholders, that this is the way we act. If you don't like that orientation, you can buy shares in something else. Um, so the uh, idea is effectively capitalism based on patient capital, but it's no less capitalism. It is, it is real capitalism, but it is, it, it is a, it's a model where part of the dividend uh, from the proceeds of the company is reinvested in society for philanthropic purposes, as opposed to the American model where you would have individual philanthropists. In the US, it is, it's, a, it's a model which is not allowed legally to have, it's not allowed for foundations to have corporate interests. In the, in the US, we exist with corporate interest, which gives us an ongoing financial dividend from the company. We invest that on the side to uh, consolidate our ownership and financial strength. And the proceeds from all of this should be reinvested into society uh, for benefit of society. So, so I, was, I was wondering if at any point did you actually imagine what it would be like to be the CEO of one of your competitors, you know, who operates on the, let's say, the more traditional kind of uh, model of capitalism, maximizing shareholder value and so on? I, I felt that I was, I was blessed by having this, uh, for, first of all, long-term oriented uh, sh controlling shareholder. Um, because it allowed me to make the necessary long-term investments. I needed not worry. I mean, I, 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 my entree as a CEO was shortly thereafter with a profit warning and um, for various reasons and it's, it's all history. But I mean, on the normal circumstances, I probably wouldn't have survived as CEO. Uh, but in this case, uh, there were a more long-term orientation as to what the company should stand for. And, and so we moved on and became successful in the process. I guess you engage with CEOs from competitor companies from time to time. Oh yeah. We're, we're, I mean, I guess they were probably quite envious. Yeah, they, in a way they thought we were shielded from, uh, from competitive takeovers by our ownership structure, which we were. But what was so uh, gratifying was to show that we could create the best level of long-term value of any of them at the end. Uh, so, but, but that's again, you know, it was, CSR orientation is often being, being portrayed as a better way of creating value. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that that argument can be made at least in the short time period we have of evaluating it. It could be, be that the companies that are doing best are uh, also having resources and bandwidth uh, to behave decently. Yeah. Um, so just on the, the, the final quick question, I was gonna ask you, um, do you have a view uh, on the idea of the shareholder v stakeholder debate, uh, you know, do you, do you think it is a false dichotomy? I do. For me, it was, it was never difficult. For me, it was the enlightened shareholder approach, meaning that I looked at maximizing the value creation, monetarily value creation for the company over long periods of time. And in that time perspective, social issues, employee uh, contentment, uh, customer satisfaction, uh, community uh, relations, global interaction, all became part of 
value creation because if we were not behaving as a company, there would be legislation which would be prohibiting us from operating freely. So, uh, well, and, and ultimately that was definitely in the interest of shareholders. Yeah, I have one particular uh, incident in mind. I think I told you that we were, we were part of the lawsuit against Nelson Mandela. And uh, this was not very smart uh, as a young CEO, but it was because we feared uh, for intellectual property rights in South Africa. Following from that, I realized that even though we were not involved in HIV AIDS medicine, that we had a similar problem, which was the expansive growth of diabetes in poor countries. So I went to the general shareholders meeting and asked the shareholders for permission to take some of their dividends and put into an independent foundation to improve the treatment for people with diabetes in poor countries. They all overwhelmingly accepted this. And I did it because I felt it was the right thing to do for us as a company and because we knew and we could do something about it. But I also explained to the shareholders that it was in their long-term interest because we would become a better business, we would become a better employer, we would become a better partner in the specific business that we're in. Yeah, and of course it matters in terms of reputational value. Yeah, and, and that's the whole, that's the attraction part. Yeah.